Uh, before we do the centering prayer this morning, I um, have an announcement that Pastor Joshua is uh, is very sick today, and um, he was encouraged not to come to church for the safety of our beloved faith community, and he has been sick for the past two days with a stomach bug, but she, uh, he will. Uh, be tested if that's the only case but let us keep our pastor Joshua in our prayers uh, that he feels better and recovers soon please join with me with our centering prayer this morning for each new morning with its light for rest and shelter of the night for health and food for love and friends for everything thy goodness sends. Please join with me and open to our hymn number 383. This is a day of new beginnings. To the house of the Lord. We are so blessed to have each and every one of you. I'm Pastor Young Hak. God loves you and God has a wonderful plan for you. This is a safe and sacred place where everyone is welcome. So we welcome you and thank you for coming. At this time, if you're willing and able, I, I invite you to stand for our call to worship. Oh God, when I have food, When I have work, when I have a home, when I am without pain, and in remembering, and bestir my compassion by word and deed.
You may be seated. Please join with me with our opening prayer this morning in the bulletin. Loving and gracious God, your blessings are countless and your love is never ending. As we celebrate this Thanksgiving, we pray that you will open our hearts to you and to one another, that we may share the gifts you have given us in loving service to all people. Lord our God, you have done wondrous things on earth. Guide us as we care for and protect the earth, our home. Grant us joy of heart and may peace dwell in us. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Please open to hymn number 92 for the beauty of the earth. At this time, I invite our church members to share your joys and concerns so that we can pray for one another. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. 
Yes. She's young. Laura. Let us pray for Laura and her family because they lost their beloved ones. Oh, thank God. Thank you. Prayer for a co-worker who retired very recently. Oh, prayer for the future children. Um, I pray for Pastor Joshua. And, um, and also, I pray for the person who came by last Tuesday at the thrift shop after we closed. Um, she lost her brother, and um, she was donating her brother's uh, stuff to the thrift shop. So I pray for her and her family. Let us pray. Gracious God, there are many things that we can celebrate and there are many things that we can share with you, all the sorrows and pains that we are experiencing while we live in this world, the wilderness. Lord, we are experiencing deep sorrow and pain Nowadays, we have lost our beloved ones and we have seen our neighbors, our neighbors' pain and sorrow and they're literally lamenting and crying out to you, Lord, asking when this will end. Lord, so we ask you, for your blessing for this family and our beloved neighbors, the blessing of your love for the family and the family who lost their beloved ones. Lord, we ask that in the midst of these very challenging times, let them still experience the profound faith for each and every one of us and let them experience the grace despite the challenges. Lord, there are many things that we celebrate too. We celebrate and we hope for the better world. We hope that this world will, will be a better place for our children and for our future generation. Lord, we understand that as we pray for our future children, there are many works that we have to do as an adult living in this world. Lord, let us receive that calling from you to take care of this world, this earth, and our neighbors and our children, and let us continue to spread the love of God that you have shown us throughout our lives. Lord, please empower each and every one of us to stay healthy and safe so that we can do the works, works of our God and the works and missions of our beloved faith communities. I ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ who saved us. Amen. Please join with me with a prayer of confession in the bullet. Lord, like a shepherd, you never stop searching for your people. You care for us, anticipates our needs. 
Before we recognized we needed your grace. In love, Jesus gave his life for our forgiveness. We confess that we need your forgiveness. We confess our sins. You are the shepherd and we are your flock. But we admit the times we have tried to take your place and take control ourselves. We admit that we have not always trusted your good news to be good for us. At times, we have pleaded with you to take care to care for us, but we have held back from caring for others and ignored the needs of others. Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. Loving Shepherd, teach us by the Holy Spirit to follow you in the days and places of the weeks ahead. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord, for your love and forgiveness in our life. At this time, if you're willing and able, I invite you to stand for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to pass the peace, but since we are not able to move around, I invite you to find one person next to you. One person next to you. And say this after me. Did you find, don't look at me, find the person next to you. <laughs> and say this. Neighbor, Oh neighbor, oh neighbor, you look amazing today. <laughs> Did you know that you are the beloved child of God? Peace be with you and also with you. Thank you. <laughs> you may be seated. Please join me with a prayer of illumination. Gracious God, we are about to read the Word of God. When we do so, come Holy Spirit, open our hearts so that we can see the love, so that we can experience the grace that you have wrote, have written in the Bible. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 95. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are, are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand.
Our epistle reading today is from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. Paul's Prayer I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all, all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all. At this time, if you're willing and able, I invite you to stand for our gospel reading. Our gospel reading today is from Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. And the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was, when was it then that we saw you hungry and gave you food, were thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer him, Truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of this, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. You may be saved. At this time, I invite our young disciples to 
Listen carefully uh, through the camera. Um, here, I have a light. And there's a power plug. Look what happens if it's not plugged in. Uh, no matter how much I turn it on, it doesn't turn on because it's not connected. It doesn't get electricity from the power line. But once I connect it, it should turn on. See? See the bright light? Just like this light, we need to be connected to our God. Without our connection with God, if we are not connected with God, we, we won't see the light from our, our hearts and our bodies. So always, we should pray that we are always connected with God through our prayers, and through our lives and through our uh, time with our friends and parents and our families so that we can see the light the light that shines from us through Jesus Christ that we are connected to okay let us always remember that we need Jesus to shine the light let us pray dear God Thank you for Jesus who came to us and who have shown us the light, the love, and the grace. Let us always be connected with our Jesus, with our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we can also shine the light as Jesus did. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join with me in an attitude of prayer. Compassionate God, we come here thirsty for your word to learn and relearn what really matters in this world.
Fill us with a desire to be your people and to worship you in truth. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Many different people come to our thrift shop. And last Tuesday, Trinity thrift shop closed early around 11.30ish. And around that noon, I was walking toward the church and someone was waving hand from the parking lot. Hi, <laughs> where do, do I donate my stuff? And I replied, the first shed right there, the first shed. But she couldn't hear it because I have a soft voice and, and said, I can't hear you. So I went to her car and helped her move her boxes in the trunk that she wanted to donate. When we closed the door of the shed, the first shed where the, all the donations go, uh, when we closed it and walking back toward her car, she started crying because the donation was from her brothers who passed away. And she shared me her memory with her brother at the parking lot and shared the story how her family all passed away too early and she's the only one left alone. And in the midst of the sorrow and pain, she had a lot of paperwork that she had to had to do regarding her, her brother's death. From insurance, car insurance, selling a truck that she bought for him, housing, donations, and all the others. There were so many paperwork that she had to do, and she was uh, stressed out with anxiety. And I think we all have such experiences like that in our life. There are times when we just can't stop crying because we lost our beloved ones. Listening to her story, I felt so much pain and sorrow in her heart, and I felt the pain and, and I prayed for her. We prayed together at the parking lot for her and her family. And she said something that really touched my soul. She said that she was thankful. That she was thankful that God allowed her to live a little longer than her family so that she can take care of what her family left behind. She also made a joke that her brother might have troubles with all these paperwork. If it was her who passed away and her brother uh, left behind. And that she will, she will definitely talk about it when we all see each other again in heaven. So I asked her to invite me over when that time comes so that I can tell her brother everything that she had to go through. Her faith her faith that we will all see each other again, and her thanksgiving to God in the midst of all these pains really touched my heart. The Bible says that we should give thanks in all circumstances, but can we really do so? How do we give thanks in all circumstances? It seems almost impossible to give thanks when we are deeply lamenting and crying, especially when we lost our beloved ones. But here's the wisdom that helps us realize where true thanksgiving comes from. Thanksgiving comes from our profound faith in God, the Redeemer who saved us, the creator who created the whole universe from nothing. 
and our God who loves each and every one of us. In the midst of all the pain and sorrow that we experience with the wilderness of this world, our faith in God allows us to hope and dream of the kingdom of heaven, where we will all see each other again, where we will meet our beloved ones, and where our sorrows will change into joy and praise. Dear friends, on this Thanksgiving Sunday and this Thanksgiving Day will be very different than what we experienced before. In the midst of very challenging time, we see our beloved neighbors and our beloved, neighbor, beloved uh, families and friends pain and sorrow. I sincerely hope and bless all of us that we keep our profound faith in God, in the profound love and grace of God. Amen. Please stand for our doxology, hymn 2036.
gracious God, we pray for these offerings. Lord, we pray that these offerings be used to spread the love of God in the midst of very challenging times. When our neighbors, when our beloved ones, when our families and friends are experiencing uh, deep sorrow and pain, Lord, please use us as an instrument of your peace. Bless all the hard works that our church members did to do, to do these offerings. And Lord, please, please bless these offerings be used to, to comfort the people of God and the children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, announcement. Um, so Pastor Joshua is sick, so please keep our Pastor Joshua in our prayers. Um, and uh, uh, I don't have any other announcements, but um, I would encourage that, that you call your beloved ones today. Um, your friends or your families, uh, just say how are you and hi, uh, this Thanksgiving Sunday, how's everything with you? And just, just a regular chat. And I think that's what, what people really need these days. So please do call your beloved ones, your family today. Is there any other announcement? I have one more announcement. Um, John and Steve uh, helped out the, for the church building and, and the heater was not working. But yesterday, it was yesterday, right? Um, yeah, yesterday they fixed it. So that's why we stay warm and uh, stay warm at the church, church building. So thank you, John, and thank you, Steve, for your work. Please receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you wherever you go. May the Lord grant you the peace, the joy, and the love that the Lord has shown you throughout your lives and will show you through you and to the people around you. Go in peace, my friends, knowing that the fierce love of God will never, ever let you go. Amen.